How does this whole thing end? Uh, Probably in tears. For who? Yeah. Who's exactly. crying? Is everybody crying? Exactly. <laughs> Who's crying when? <laughs> so I think there were some of the hedge funds that were crying initially. Yes. Then maybe some of the Wall Street bets people who bought last would be crying. And then eventually, there's an, probably another set of hedge funds, or even the Wall Street bets mob, and that, you know that army. Some of them might have broke ranks and then shorted the stock. Yeah. So nobody knows. So everybody has to be aware of what's happening in the game. So if Wall Street bets said, "Hey, let's squeeze these hedge funds because they have too much short interest. Let's all buy the stock," then some of them might have said, "Okay, you know, it's at th two or three hundred dollars. Maybe I'll join the short movement now that they've covered," mm -hmm. and they could have shorted. They're in, been like double agents. So people have to understand like this stuff is gnarly and it's a, it's a free for all. I mean, it is a literal free for all. There's a kind of morality, like a big statement that Wall Street Bets made in terms of like the elites can't just push us around. They can't bully around. But at the same time, you know, they're also interested in making money, right? Yeah. Is, it, is uh, what's your sense? You said that some of the people on the Wall Street bets might have broken off and, and shorted the stock. Sure. Are they more interested? There was an emergent like morality that emerged and sure. and said like, we're not going to put up with the centralized elites. But is that going to continue? Are they going to fight the power structures that are bad for society? Or are they going to now like? I mean, are they ultimately going to introduce more chaos that's going to damage the economy and damage the world? Or are they going to continue being the good guys and fighting the uh, yeah. the, the the evils that manipulate uh, the market? What's your sense? You know, it, it really feels like the Dark Knight series of films <laughs> where like some people just want to see the world burn. Yeah. I think there is a contingent of people who just literally want to see chaos. Yeah. Like, you know that contingent on some of these, you know, forums who just want to create chaos, right? Yeah. Um, so there, there's certainly that chaos contingent, but I think overall what the arc will show is a group of people getting massively educated. You see it in crypto as well. There was like a three-year period where all of these failed entrepreneurs who I knew who couldn't build companies were then coming back to me after their companies has failed or after they gave up or couldn't clear a market raising money with the venture capital community and they were doing ICOs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, D I met you before, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm doing an ICO now. I'm like, okay, where's your company at? And they're like, here's a white paper. And I was like, this white paper with spelling errors in it that says you're going to destroy Airbnb because yeah. everybody's apartment is going to be on an immutable ledger. Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be better in a regular database that was <laughs> private and not public? Like, why does it need to be on an immutable ledger? So it can't change. I'm like, not changing the database is a feature? That's That does not seem like a good feature. Yeah. And they couldn't explain it. They were like, well, just people are interested in ICOs. Yeah. And there was that ICO mania. And what it showed was there's a global appetite for risk. People want to try new things. This is one of the great things about the human spirit. It is one of the great things about capitalism. 